Now, a definitively last exercise case for this chapter before we turn to a new one. Uh, I'm so sorry, but that uh, writing of exercise case is to show you how you should deal with uh, German tax um, cases when it comes to concretely and actually solving them. That's a high temptation. And so I couldn't refrain from doing another one. Well, um, let's just look to the potential case, or not to the potential, but the actual case, which we are going to have a look on. A trader from Heligoland, that is a small island uh, which belongs to Germany, but which has a special status under evaluated tax law, because Heligoland is not regarded as part of the German inland for value added tax purposes only. So um, for value added tax, Heligoland is a third country or a third territory, whereas for all other German taxes, Heligoland is inland, especially for income tax, corporation tax, and all the like. Okay, now we have a trader from Heligoland, and he has a shop on Heligoland. That's already probably a fairy tale because there is very, very few economy on Heligoland. It's a very small island, but in my imagination, that trader has a shop with some antique things and antique uh, machines and so probably rusty stuff from former centuries, which he intends to sell to interested customers, collectors, or whoever wants to sell something, uh, to buy something. Well. An old, nearly antique machine in his shop in Heligoland um, that sold to a customer from Hamburg in Germany for 10,000 euro. The customer takes the machine home. However, he does it, he does it. So that's part one of this case. Another old machine is sold now to a collector from Stuttgart in the south of Germany for 50,000. The customer, however, declares himself completely unable to transport the machine himself. So the trader uh, organizes the transport uh, and also organizes the VAT declaration on the border of the mainland. You remember uh, Heligoland is a territory. So if goods cross from Heligoland to the mainland, they uh, are imported. Number three. A machine um, is sold to a customer in Cologne, Germany for 200,000. Now that machine is not in stock. Um, that is just a machine which really somebody ordered, a new machine. And so our trader in Heligoland just gives in turn the order to produce that machine to a subcontractor or another person in Munich uh, for 120,000 euro. And then says to the subcontractor, please send this machine immediately from Munich to um, Cologne to my own customer after it has been finished because it would be a waste of time and transportation costs to bring it first to Heligoland and then to bring it back to Cologne. Um, and the fourth event is the trader orders a good from a trader in Hamburg and tells this trader then to send this good immediately, directly, and however you call it, um, to his own customer in Chile. 25,000 euro, he sold it to the customer in Chile. Now that is a rather complex case or not a very simple one because it consists of several events. So let's think about all these things. Let's begin at the beginning, transaction number one. Uh, first, let's look what happens. Trader T from Haligoland sells to customer C. He sells an old machine. The price is 10,000. And we have a movement of the good. The move of the good goes from Heligoland to Hamburg. So that is what happens here. And now when we know what the event is and what happens, we can check it for the legal requirements. Let's begin with taxability. We have to test one one number one because um, number four, the importation VAT, is nothing which you really have to check in real life. That's done by the customs authorities. So for us, uh, let's say in a tax or accounting department, we only have to check one one number one, or later one one number five, but never one one number four. So trader 
uh, from Heligoland is an entrepreneur, acts evidently within the scope of his enterprise, demands a consideration, so um, we can directly concentrate on the two requirements which are decisive. The first one is this is a delivery because a machine is a tangible good and selling the machine means you transfer the position like an owner. That is what is required for a delivery and the 3-1 USTG, so it's a delivery. Now we need the place of delivery and the basic rule is uh, if the good is moved, the place of delivery is where the movement towards the customer begins. That would be Heligoland. Now Heligoland would not be a part of the German inland, so it would not be taxable, but there is a special rule which you always have to test if there is uh, a good which comes from a third territory into the inland, that is 3.8. The good comes from the third territory, that's Heligoland in our case, to the inland, that's Hamburg, that's fulfilled, and additionally the imputation VAT must be paid by the seller. Now, that's not the case here, because the customer from Hamburg carries the machine home. The customer from Hamburg is evidently the person who passes the border control. So the customer from Hamburg is evidently the person who pays the importation VAT. So 3A does not apply, so the basic rule remains in force. And that means the place of delivery in our case is Heligoland. Now, Heligoland is, as I often already mentioned, not a part of the value added tax inland of Germany. That can be looked up in one, two sentence. One of the German Umsatzsteuergesetz, the USDG, and so this transaction is not taxable at all in Germany. So case closed, finished. After transaction one, what are we going to do now? Well, surprise, transaction number two. What happens is again the first step. Trader T in Heligoland is active and sells something to customer, let's call him 2, in Stuttgart, in the south of Germany. Uh, what is sold is an old machine. It's sold for a price of 50,000. And let's look to the places from where it goes to, where it goes. Heligoland to Stuttgart. No, ah, sorry, Hamburg here is a printing mistake. Um, to Stuttgart necessarily, Stuttgart. So let's have a look. Taxability to test is one one number one. Um, Trader T is an entrepreneur. We know that already acts within the scope of his enterprise. Demands a consideration. So the remarkable requirements are again the two last requirements. Is it a delivery? And the answer is a clear yes. It's a machine. It's sold. And where is the place of delivery? The basic rule would be Heligoland again. But 3.8 says I shift the place of delivery to the inlet. By the way, without formal specification, or uh, no, without formal, without um, a, more, a more exact specification of what is the place in the inlet which is meant. It's just that to the inlet. Uh, because in our case it's the deliverer who pays the importation value added tax, and then 3.8 applies. So now the um, delivery is made in the inland by fiction, so the transaction is declared taxable under 11 number 1. That means our seller has to hand in a regular VAT declaration and pay VAT on the sales price. Is there any tax exemption which could prevent it? No. In para 4 you have nothing. The tax base is the net amount, and that is in our case so all what is paid, 50,000, minus the VAT included therein, 19 out of 119. So we end up with a net amount of 42,016.81 euro. The tax rate and the tax amount have to be determined. It's 19% under 12.1 USDG because the reduced rate does not apply. So we end up with 7,983.19 euro. The taxpayer is the seller. The arisal of the tax cannot be determined because there is no date given, although we know the rule which should apply. That's a regular rule. Uh, the tax will arise at the end of that preliminary declaration period during which the delivery was made here. 
There is nothing special out of um, the usual testing scheme, so nothing additional which needs a remark. The last remark is then the input tax deduction is possible for the customer if the customer buys the machine for purposes of his enterprise. C51 number one for this he needs any correct invoice of the Heligoland seller. Well, and so now let us go on with the next transaction. Here we have Trader K, a uh, Trader T from Heligoland, selling something to a customer in Cologne, Germany. That's something in the machine. The machine costs two hundred thousand. That's the price agreed. And we have a subcontractor in Munich who sells the same machine to Trader T. Um, not an old machine. Also, that is a printing mistake. Um, you see what the negative consequences of copy and paste may be. I'm sorry. So it's a machine, a new one, 120,000 is the price agreed upon between the subcontractor and the trader. Uh, here you see the same machine is sold twice, one after another, and so there must be a logical sequence of time. The lower contract, subcontractor to trader, must happen first, and then the trader sells uh, to customer K because you can only sell in the sense of hand over a machine if you have got it first. Um, so the first contract must be the lower one. So now let's look from where to where the machine goes during the contracts. And uh, usually there you begin with the first contract in the time sequence. So the lower one, the subcontractor fabricates the machine in Munich and then sends it on the order of the trader T, his customer, to Cologne. Surprise, not Heligoland. Um, to Cologne because the trader, the customer of the subcontractor said, I want that machine to have it in Cologne, not in Heligoland. And customer's wish is king's wish, so you follow it. Um, after this first transaction has been terminated uh, completely, then Trader T can begin to hand over the machine in a second delivery to his own customer. At that moment, the machine is already at Cologne and stays at Cologne. So, after we know that, we know everything which we need for the analysis of the situation. Transaction number one, the subcontrader sells to Trader T and the good goes from Munich to Cologne. Taxability is judged under 11 number one USDG. The subcontractor is the entrepreneur, acts within the scope of his enterprise and for consideration nearly clearly. A delivery is given again because the machine is a tangible good and 3-1 applies, that's no surprise. And the next and decisive thing is again the place of delivery. Here we can say, again, the basic rule applies. That is where the delivery of the movement of the good towards the customer begins. That is here in Munich because it's sent from there. So the transaction is taxable. Tax exemption, no, there is no tax exemption under paragraph four, especially there is no expert because the good does not leave Germany. The trader, the customer resides in a third country, that is Heligoland, but the good does not go to the third country, so we don't have an expert. The tax base is the net amount, uh, that's the gross amount minus VAT. Here you see the figure on the chart. The tax rate is 19% applied to the next am net amount, and then you end up with 19,159.56 euro. The taxpayer is the subcontractor from Munich because he is the entrepreneur meant by 13A1 number one. Tax arisal is again no date given, but the rule applicable is clear. End of that preliminary declaration period, that is the months usually during which the um, delivery happened. The input tax claim as uh, Trader T can claim back the input tax paid as a part of the price and the 51 number one. Let's now proceed to transaction number two. That's um, trader to customer K. 
taxability it has again to be tested t is now the entrepreneur everything's fulfilled it's still a delivery the place of delivery is well, to determine under paragraph 37, because during the second delivery, the good is at Cologne and stays at Cologne to transfer ownership. The good does not need to have, does not need to be moved. My God, what a sentence. Um, and so the place of delivery is Cologne. Cologne is part of the German VAT inland, so the transaction is taxable. Uh, no tax exemption. Tax amount is again the net amount, that is the gross amount, 200,000, um, divided by 1.19, so by 119%. Then we get the net amount, that's 168,067.23 euro. The tax rate is 19%, that leads to 31,932.77 euro. And the taxpayer is the seller, that's a trader in Heligoland, 13A number one. Arrival of tax, again unknown, but rule is known, which would determine it. And the input tax claims is again the customer in Cologne can claim the input tax from that transaction if the machine has been bought by him for his enterprise activities. This is, by the way, called a chain transaction, that is a transaction where a good is sold twice or thrice or four times but only moved once directly from the first one to the last one in the chain um, that is sometimes declared to be or meant to be complicated but as you see here if you follow the basic rules how to prepare the case data and other things it's entirely easy um, however, since the rumor has been so widely spread that chain transactions are complicated, must be complicated, and that nobody is allowed to see through, the German and the EU legislators have clarified them of where the movement of the good has to be attributed to. And here you can see the confirmation that the first delivery, that one bearing number one in our, in our sketch here, is indeed the one with the movement of the good. That might be nice if you want to collect an additional point for finding that special rule. Okay, after transaction number three, we necessarily end up with transaction number four. And again, let's have a look what happens. The seller sells to Trader T, Hamburg to Heligoland. That's a good. 20,000. Immediately afterwards, the trader sells it to a customer in Chile for 25. And this is now the first, the upper one is now the first transaction which must happen first, the second one happens afterwards. Um, the reason for that is our trader T cannot hand over a machine before he has got it, so until or as long delivery one is still going on, you cannot begin with delivery number two. This also would be called a chain transaction, something which is um, changing nothing. Um, during delivery one, the um, good goes from Hamburg to Chile because uh, the seller is in Hamburg, fabricates the machine there, and his trader, uh, his customer T says, please send this machine uh, in order to deliver to me, yeah, send this machine to an address in Chile, which I give you and hand it over to a person which I named to you. And if you did this, then if you have the, after you have done this, to be more clear, after you have done this, you have fulfilled your delivery obligation against me. You brought it to the place where I wanted it to and you handed it over to the person which I named as the person who should receive in my on my behalf as my representative. And uh, yeah, so an afterwards trader T can deliver to customer C. During the first delivery, the machine went from Hamburg to Chile, so when the second delivery can begin, the machine is already in Chile and stays in Chile. That gives us a clear impression of this so-called train transaction again. And transaction number one, 
we can already uh, write or make the necessary and evident remarks on taxability. The seller is uh, from Hamburg, an entrepreneur, acts within the scope of the enterprise and acts for consideration. That's uh, plain stuff. He makes a delivery in 3.1 and the place of delivery is where the movement of the good begins. That's Hamburg, that's in the inland, so it's taxable. Now that good goes during that delivery from Hamburg to Chile. Um, and so this is an exportation. Paragraph 6.1, number one says, if the uh, supplier sends the good abroad, this is an export if it goes to a third country. And that an export is tax free is set in paragraph four, number one, letter A. So we have to bother only about the tax base. That's 20,000 net, like gross, because there is no VAT included. And we can make a remark that the seller in Hamburg, in spite of the tax exemption of his output, retains the right to claim input tax for his input. Okay. Transaction number two is now trader T. Sells to custom in Chile and the delivery again and the place of delivery under 3 7 um, because there is no movement of the good. The good is in Chile, stays in Chile at the same place as before. Chile is not German inland, so the whole second affair is not taxable at all in Germany. And that means that second transaction is a very short one. Um, case examined, case closed. Um, you see, I talked your ears off in an enormous speed within 21 minutes here, approximately. Um, so for a very well-trained uh, person working on such a case, it should nearly be possible to solve such a case in such a speed without making mistakes. Um, so train, train and train cases, make yourself familiar with the German Value Added Tax Act, um, and naturally follow the channel in the next videos on COE, when we talk about the treatment of value added tax transactions with other EU states. Okay, now goodbye for this time and see you back soon.